Hi, in this video, I will cover some basic concept of branch prediction. So before I get into branch prediction, I want to talk a little bit about control hazard. So what is control hazard? Um, so say if we have a branch instruction, it will have five stages. And let's assume that branch logic is done in the execution stage. So if we have um, instruction follows a branch instruction, let's say add. So we see that the instruction fetch uh, stage happens before the branch and jump decisions are made. So now we have a hazard. We cannot um, uh, fetch any instruction until the branch comparison is done. And next PC address is not known until two cycles after branch or jump instruction. If we assume that um, the branch logic is in the execution stage. So what are some solutions to the control hazard? Um, the first one is the easiest one. We just add some stars in between branch instruction and the following instruction. So say if we have a branch instruction and the branch logic is in the execution stage and we just simply add two lines of bubbles. And um, the instruction fetch stage of the next instruction will start from here. So notice that the instruction fetch is after the execution stage. So the control hazard can be solved by this way. And another solution is to move branch decision so that it can be executed as early as possible. So say if we have three instructions, the first one is add. And second one is add as well. And we have branch instruction after that. So notice that all the registers are independent from each other. So we can simply move the branch instructions above. So that while we are doing the branch comparison, we can execute the following two instructions. And we do not need add two lines of stars. But one of the downside of this is that what if we have a register that depends on each other? So say if we have a register number five here, so we cannot just simply move the branch instruction above. Um, otherwise, we will use the wrong value of register number five. Um, so in this case, the compiler need to do some extra work to move the instructions around so that they don't depend on each other. And the third way is the delay decision. So delay decision is basically saying that the instruction after the branch instruction will always be executed. So we need to put some irrelevant instruction after the branch instruction. So no matter the branch is taken or not, we will always execute that. So in that way, we can save um, one line of bubble. Um, and the last solution is the branch prediction, which is the one we want to focus on today. So there are two types of branch prediction. One is static branch prediction, and another one is dynamic branch prediction. So by the name static, um, we can know that um, this type of prediction will always predict the branch is taken or not taken. And it will make corrections for the wrong prediction. So say if we have a branch instruction and we have an instruction follow that. So we will always predict that um, the branch is not taken. So um, before we know the result of the branch comparison, we just execute the following instruction. So if we are correct, that's good for us. We saved two lines of stars. 
But what if we are wrong? So say、um, branch comparison is done in the execution stage. So、um, in this cycle, we will know that we did wrong prediction. So basically, we need to flush、um, the、um, registers in IFN ID because they are wrong values. And basically, we need to go back to the branch instruction and start over again. So by the same logic, if the branch is in the memory stage, we need to flush three stages of、um, registers. And if we are、um, the branch prediction is in the execution stage, we need to flush two stages. And if the branch is in the ID stage, we need to flush one stage. So how do we know that when should we predict the branches are always taken, and when should we predict the branches are not always always not taken? So there are mainly two types of loops.、Um, first type is that、um, the condition for the branch is usually false. So whenever the branch condition is false, it will go through the loop. And、uh, until the branch condition is true, and it will jump out of the loop. So in this case, we want to predict the branch is not taken for better accuracy. And the second type of loop is that、um, the condition of the branch is true for most of time. So whenever the condition is met,、uh, we will go through the loop again until、um, the condition is false. Then we will ask. Uh, exit the loop and、uh, execute the next instruction. So in this case, we want to predict the branch are always taken for better accuracy. So the static branch prediction is good for the program that mainly has one type of loop. So what if we have a large program that has mixed type of loops? So Um, in this case, the dynamic branch prediction can do a better job. So the dynamic branch prediction has prediction bit, which is usually one bit or two bit. And for the wrong predictions, in addition to flashing the incorrect instructions, you will invert the prediction bit. So let's take a look at the one bit predictor first. So、um, in this case, we assume that it will start from zero, so it will predict that the branch is not taken. And for this loop, we assume that it will be executed ten times. So for the first to the ninth time, the branch condition will be true. And for the very last time, the branch condition will be false, and we jump out of the loop. So for the first time, we made a wrong prediction because we predicted that the branch is not taken. So after first loop, you will realize that it made a wrong prediction. So you will invert the prediction bit to one. So we now predict that the branch is always taken. And we will be right from second to the ninth time. And for the very last time,、uh, we'll be wrong again. And、uh, we will invert the prediction bit again to not taken. So let's look at the accuracy, which will be eight times right divided by a total of ten times, which will give us eighty percent of accuracy. Um, let's compare this to the static branch prediction. If we predict the branch is not taken, we will be only right for the very last time. So the accuracy will be one over ten, which will give us ten percent of accuracy. So now let's take a look at the two-bit predictors. So instead of flipping the predictor right away after one wrong pred prediction,、um, we will not flip our predictor. Until we see two wrong predictions in a row, and、uh, this finite state machine diagram can help us to understand a little better. So we, if we start off with、um, 
um, predict、uh, prediction that the branch are taken. And if we、uh, if the branch is taken, it will stay in this state. And if the branch is not taken for the first time, we'll still predict that branch is taken. And if the branch is not taken again, we will predict that it's not taken. So same thing happen if we start off with branch not taken. So if it's taken for the first time, we'll still predict that it's not taken. And if it's taken for for a second time, we will predict that branch will be taken. So why this is better than the one bit predictor? So we are adding an extra bit for a reason, right? Um. So let's take a look at the loop. So um, like we discussed before, the accuracy for the uh one bit predictor will be eighty percent of time for the um first loop, and at the end of the first loop, it will still predict that the branch is not taken. So the same thing will happen for the second and third loop. So the Accuracy will always be eighty percent. So for the two bit predictors,、um, let's look at the first time. It will be wrong, since、uh, we assume that prediction bit is zero for the first time. And for the second time, it will be wrong again because we will not flip its prediction bit until it sees two wrong predictions. And then after the second prediction, it will flip the Prediction bit from zero to one, so we will be right from third to ninth time. Um, it will be right, and for the very last time, it will be wrong again. So this is for the first loop, and we go to the second loop. So um, now the prediction bit is one, so we will start off correct. Until the ninth, uh, ninth loop. So the first time to the ninth time, it will be correct, and for the last time, it will be wrong. And for the third loop, um, it will be the same thing as the second loop, and it will be um ninety percent correct. So um, the only time that the two bit predictor do bad is the first time um it enters a wrong loop. So the first time it will be only seventy percent correct, but as we have more and more loops, the accuracy will become closer and closer to ninety percent, and which is better than the eighty percent of one bit predictor. So that why two bit predictors can be, be can be better in some cases. And that's pretty much all I want to talk about branch prediction in this video, and thank you.